Welcome to the Wolf Shits 2, or the Wolf's Gorge. This uh, set of buildings and this area was built around right about uh, between 1942 and 1944. It's one of quite a few of Hitler's, um, um, if you want to call it retreats or um, military bases that he'd set up across France and other co other countries as well. One of the fam famous ones is in um, Poland called the Wolf's Lair. At its peak, it took over 22,000 men to build this place, including slave labour. Concrete they used on this base was over 250,000 cubic metres. They reckon over 860 bunkers over a six kilometre area uh, was built uh, as part of the defensive structure of this, uh, this place. This place, uh, they used to abbreviate it as W2. They say that uh, it's that big, this place, they had three sewerage works pumping sewerage out. They directly supplied the water from round here, um, oops, with a, a, to a 500 cubic metre water tank. So it was spring water they were pumping into here. Uh, the electricity came from the local French electric uh, company. And uh, they had generators in here as well, obviously, because if something happened, uh, they'd need to um, use... Um, um, electricity to uh, communicate to Berlin. On the 6th of June 1944, D-Day happened in Normandy. Erwin, Wan Ermil Bl Erwin Rommel and von Rundstedt um, needed to deploy troops down there because they believed that that was the actual um, invasion party, but Hitler didn't believe that. He often thought that um, we were going to attack the Pas de Calais because that's the shortest route. And a few diversionary tactics uh, were set up to, um, including General Patton, actually, uh, who, who um, command, uh, I should say, who commanded a, a, a dummy force to divert them from um, from the true landings, which was uh, Normandy. Um, they weren't allowed. Von Rundstedt and, R and Rommel weren't allowed to um, deploy any troop because they needed Hitler's permission. It got that bad. Well, Rommel did. That she sent a, a, a detailed um, letter to uh, Hitler, and they had a meeting here. So on the 17th of June, 1944, von Rundstedt, Rommel, and Hitler came to this area and had a meeting about what was going on at Normandy. So let's have a walk round this area and uh, see what to we can find. Now this area has been recently cleared out by a, an associated group uh, to do with the Wolschulst and um, they're uh, trying to make it into a museum and they're starting to put things together so they can actually form a museum. I was, I was thinking that uh, when I got here that the gates would be shut but there's no gates in the front of this so whether I've come at the, the back of it or the front of it I'm not quite sure. But uh, let's have a look at what's here. This is obviously another uh, bunker. It has no name on it. This looks like it's leading to what they call a Tobruk above the, which is a uh, firing position. Let's have a look. Oh, you can't see it there. But anyway, up there, there's a hole. You can't see it, but it's up there. Yeah, this is definitely uh, a Tobruk. Right, I'm not sure what this is. I may, I may be wrong, but this could be uh, bunker number one, the Hitler bunker. Let's have a look. Uh, behind me is a uh, a bunker, but I'm not sure what it. Uh, there's no number on it. No, I know the Hitler bunker was number one. It was right next to, well, not far off the railway line. The railway line's probably about 200 metres to the right of me. Um, there was a fortified tunnel. Some of the one at St Remo. Uh, and he had it fortified so he could obviously hide his train there and if any um, attack at all then at least he could uh, he could escape into the tunnel 
and uh, just make it make it safe. Now there was bomb blast doors in there, but apparently the uh, the French um, government recently have, have changed it all. Now it used to be two lines, and now it's only one line into the tunnel. So the bomb blast doors have gone, and whatever else was in there uh, has gone as well. Now there's two hatches on top of this, and there's also like a, I think it's a, 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 a ventilator as well. And there's something that looks up there, looks like a periscope, I'm not sure if it is or not. We'll get up on top and have a look anyway. There's the top of the steps previously when I went up to Brook. They've put a thing over the top of it just to weigh it down. Uh, but that would have been a, a position for a machine gun nest or martyr. So if that's the case, this bunker I'm stood on now is uh, quite important. There are a couple of, I'm not sure what they are, whether we can lift them up or not, I don't know. Let's have a look. They cannot, oh no, they're sealed completely. Can't lift them up. I really don't know what they are. And there's the filter. It looks like a periscope. This appears to be bunker number two, or so it says. It says number two on it anyway. Uh, if that's the case, this was for uh, general uh, um, um, staff of the Wehrmacht, the armed forces. And the back section there, if we were getting bombed, because obviously you can see how thin that is, that would easily get a bomb go straight through that. That back bit there, which is covered now, there is a um, would be a bomb-proof um, shelter where they could all go into it. Now I'm walking on top of this bunker, and obviously you can see all the grass and that. It's typical um, bunker, to be honest with you, because um, they encourage growth of natural foliage to hide um, the actual bunker itself. So when the Allies come to bomb it, they probably wouldn't have even they wouldn't know it was basically here. Well, there's a chimney, so there's um, pretty obvious there's going to be living quarters here. There's part of the roof that stretches round the other side of this um, this bomb-proof bunker. A lot of these bunkers um, were um, they had a, a roof thickness of something like three and a half meters. I think that was including the walls and thickness as well. The walls as well. So when the Allies were dropping bombs on this place, um, unless they'd be using something like a tall boy or a, a grand slam, then they're not going to do much penetrating of this place. Well, you can see the hooks there. They're typical hooks to um, throw up camouflage. Now, they threw camouflage over the top of this because the surrounding area would have been covered in grass and and stuff like that. Uh, but this area here is obviously, it, it, from reconnaissance pictures, they'd have probably seen something like this anywhere. So what they do is they would have thrown a camouflage net over the top and it would disguise it even more, hopefully, well, saying disguise it uh, with the background. You can see uh, four ventilation shafts there, just to make sure that the air inside's of good quality. This site's looked after by an association called ASW2. Now, they've got permission off the French government to open this place up to uh, um, make it into a museum, so they're renovating this area. Uh, I tried to email them, I should say I contacted them um, on Facebook a while ago and he replied saying they were only open at weekends. And I uh, I Facebooked them again yesterday on the messenger and asked them, is it possible I could get in myself? They haven't replied, so I just turned up. I managed to drive in, but I'm not sure what end I've drove in, actually. I've heard there's a gate, uh, but there's no gate on where I came in anyway. So if you, you can uh, drive through a place called Lafo. Um, and then you can gain this place. These bunkers were named uh, with numbers so they can identify them easier. Um, I think the, uh, the the personal names of these bunkers I think came later on after the war. Right, um, this back here, Zucrello, as I said before, is for... Um, 
uh, armed forces who are staying here. Now, there's a bunker somewhere in here called Bunker Number 5, and it's a communications centre. And they reckon that it was that big, uh, they had six red lines going out of it, telephone lines. Uh, obviously back to Berlin and other places. And uh, on the back of it, there's a, uh, a, a another bunker on the back of it. Obviously, if they uh, had a, an air raid, they could go in and get themselves protected. And it was exactly the same as the front. So in other words, it had the same communication systems as it on the front. But they could carry on working at the back if the front got destroyed. We've got to find it, though. Right, I've just noticed this bunker here. Uh, as It looks like it's number one. If that's the case, then this is the Hitler bunker. So the railway line is probably about 50 metres to my right. Uh, and no doubt the, uh, the tunnel is as though that's where he would have hid, hid, sorry, hidden his uh, so, Führer Sonderzug, which basically means the Führer Special Train. Now in this bunker uh, was a large main workroom with a fireplace, a kitchen and private apartments with a bathroom, and behind the bunker was an air raid shelter, which I'll have a look in a minute. You can probably imagine Hitler driving down here in his armoured car to pull up here to meet von Rundstedt and Rommel jumping out, shaking hands and going into this bunker and uh, having a chat about what's happening with the D-Day landings. And look at them doors there, great big, I'm assuming bomb blast doors, Entree Danger, that's obviously in French. Uh, and all the windows could be shut with these metal... Um, cladding uh, to stop any fragments if um, it was ever bombed. That's behind the uh, Hitler Führer bunker number one. It'd have probably quite them steps there. Gone along and straight down into the um, bunker down below for safekeeping. Let's have a look. What can we see? Hmm, a water tank of some kind. Not very big, but no doubt it would have been kitted out comfortably for uh, Hitler. And um, a bath, whether that was a bath here or not, I don't know. Now this area has been obviously recently painted. It's obviously got to be opened up as a museum, or it probably is not a museum now. And um, you can see what they've done. So this is um, inside part of the Hitler bunker at the front. Now I had heard that um, a V1 um, V1 flying bomb was launched and it crashed not far off this site, and. Um, I think there was a, a bombing raid not far off here, and if I remember rightly, Hitler had to vacate this place and go down here, or go at least somewhere that was safe for him, until uh, everything was given the all clear. Lots of old derelict buildings around here, part of this uh, complex. Shamma's just noticed some holes in this wall here, look at them. Looks like bullet holes, that. What? Like a facade, like a fake Yeah, it looks like a facade. It's a fake village. Yeah. And... Yeah, it does look, this bit here looks like a facade. Now, you know, um, the Germans were good at trying to camouflage everything. They'd probably make it look like a village more than anything else. Um, hence the reason why. If you look behind this here, watch. There's just little walls just to keep the front walls up. That's it. No. So, I would say this is more likely a facade to make the Allies think it was just a village so they wouldn't attack it.
Right, this is bunker number five. It's a communications bunker. It's the longest communications bunker of World War Two. It's 108 metres long. It's in two sections. The front section is all communication and the back section is all communication. They're identical to the front one, but it's a bomb blast um, area. In other words, if they were attacked, then at least they could get out the way, but carry on communicating with them. Um, Whoever they wanted to communicate with. Uh, this place had uh, communications units. It had four electric power stations, one gas filtration unit in case they were tried. Somebody tried to gas them. Running water, central heating, sewage disposal, 600 lines direct to Berlin and probably the Atlantic Wall as well. Let's have a nosy inside. But nothing in there anyway now, but never mind, let's have a look round. Put the old light on. Yeah, you can see the um, electric connectors there. All the pipe that had a run down for all the communications. Yeah, it's definitely been renovated up. So be careful here. All the pipe for central heating. Quite deep there. That's got about, about three metres or ten foot deep there, I reckon. Some of the old, um, um, I think, protective cabling, that might metal cabling that wraps around the cables. Yeah, another uh, electric, uh, probably isolation box that, or maybe communications centre. Again, down there. Right, um, well, I think this is going to be the um, air raid shelter. Let's have a look. Yeah, looks like it is. So it leads, it's leading us into the... Um, the back section. There's the front bit. So you can get this way if you wanted to anyway. Just be careful of that bit there. And that bit there. This is obviously leading to the back section. There's a gas door, I reckon. Ugh. Yeah, this is a gas chamber. This is, there's two there. The limb of them sealed with them. They've been sealed so there's no, uh, there's no gas can get into these, these areas. That's where the um, gas room is. It's more than likely going to be over pressure. So if anybody tries to throw any gas in it, they'd have pumped it back out through there. If that was the case, I'll keep it so it can't get into it. It's, can't get into the actual chamber itself. And there's some more cabling. Yeah, it would have all been lit up here. See all these slots here. They'd have all been. Um, uh, I would, as you guess, probably laying cables in that through. You can see where it had been identical to the front section. And all the cable and wiring and all the pipe work for the central heating and water. We're up and running through all this lot here. Right, these here are little um, air filtration systems. Keep the uh, occupants nice and fr with fresh cleaner. And the timber there, the timber on the walls there, see that the more likely they'll be aft panelling. Now, Panley would have done a couple of things. Uh, it would have stopped it from echoing, like it is now, and uh, it would have given some kind of insulation as well, because these concrete structures and that roof would have been cold. What's that there? 
Yeah. Well, the, 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 these here, I've got um, corridors straight to the back so they can get easy access from the front if, under, if they're under um, any sort of attack. So communication rooms there would have come straight through here and straight to the bunker at the back. Heat sets these bunkers have got their own doors anyway to lock the cells in. And as I said before, it could possibly be a gas chamber looking at that, there's two doors there like that, so I've got friendly and like a gas filtration system installed as well. Now this room's a little bit different. Um, it could be a washroom, actually. I might be. I think I'm completely wrong. I'm not sure. They've got ventilation. Ah, right. I know what it is. It's where the ventilation system would have been. There'd have been a, a big um, machine here. Uh, that's to force the air out. I'm assuming, and it would have ventilated through some pipework, uh, through the actual uh, front part of this office, and through the back into um, the bunker as well. It looks like it is. With all them pipes, all them outlets there. Some of the walls, can you see, they've got, I think the I, I don't think they're original or not, I'm not quite sure, uh, but they'd have had something similar, coverings inside the bunker, you know, where the uh, the urid shelter, just to give it that soundproof bit, or so that, that less echo, there's no echo in here, obviously, and give it some kind of um, normality, and uh, give it some insulation as well. That leads straight into the uh, rear bunker. And there you have it inside the communication um, office and the, uh, the air raid shelter at the back. This is 023. I don't have any information at this present time on it, but hopefully I'll find out what it was all about. The O22, uh, Natalie it says, is the, I think it's the, um, the HQ of the, um, of the organisation that are actually renovating this area up. Well, it says number eight, Bazina, but it actually says it's bunker number 1019. Now that is the, um, headquarters of the ASW2 organisation who are restoring this site. I'm not sure what this is actually. It's got a nice floor on it anyway, a nice tile floor. So, hmm, it may be some kind of uh, reception area possibly for any uh, people that turn up and are working here. That's as much as I can see really. Tiles on the wall, could be showers, possibly. Toilets, yeah, there's a toilet down there. Can't see it, hold on. This looks just like uh, some kind of entertainment room. This like this looks like some kind of entertainment room for people who are actually working here. More out buildings. There's very little information about these places. Um, 
Let's have a nosy inside, see what it is. All I can think of, there are um, little rooms that uh, maybe accommodation, I would say. Pipe work for, uh, no doubt, central heating and uh, water. Some kind of lift to upstairs. This area is probably living accommodation, looking at it anyway. On the inside, it's tiled, it's quite decorative so it could be apartments where the uh, these Nazis lived now this building here is another bunker um, it's quite possibly the uh, the uh, where all the electric power comes from well, uh, the generators, that is. It was actually linked into the local French supply, but if that went down, then there is another bunker, which I think may be this one. I'm not quite sure. It could be, yeah, because I've been here. Yeah. Um, and uh, possibly it's this one. You can see the machine gun there popping through the uh, hole. You imagine just being here 40 odd years ago and coming up here and seeing that thing. Now, somewhere along that, I'm not sure them two little slots uh, for um, optics I'm not sure but I know that would have had an optic somewhere I'm assuming so we could have a look at what it was firing at there's another embrasure and uh, concrete here timber the the idea of that is is a bullet hits it or a shell hits it it'll either embed itself in there or it'll ricochet off and in other words it won't go that way I think there's information uh, that I've found that Rommel actually stayed here for nine days around this communication centre. Uh, more than likely, he wanted to see what was happening at uh, Normandy. Because as most generals, I think, would say that uh, that was actually the, uh, the, in the, the proper invasion. But Hitler wouldn't have it. He was adamant he was going to come uh, in the Calais area because that was the closest crossing from England to... Uh, England to uh, France. Um, if you come to visit this place, um, we just found that we could just basically walk in. We've not seen anything that tells us that we can't sort of sort of walk round. Well, it's, stuff's in French. This place is saying you're not supposed to go there, you know, because of danger. It's understandable. Some of these buildings at the back here are, are, are very dilapidated. <coughs> but the uh, uh, the uh, organisation. Uh, running this, uh, I think the the chairman is called Thierry Dupret, something like that. You can find him on Facebook. I'll try and put a link to the actual um, Walschultz site. I think that's how you pronounce it. And um, have a look at it. And if you fancy coming, no doubt email them and see what they say. I think you've only seen part of this um, Walschultz. There's lots more to it in the surrounding areas, but we just haven't got time to look at everything. There's a chalet here, or footings of a chalet, where apparently Rommel, Rundstedt and uh, Hitler had a, a meal on the 17th of June 1944 here. Yeah. Uh, there's also a swimming pool and other bits and pieces that's around this area. What make up, uh, you know, the uh, general, uh, the general um, area of what it is. When we came past this morning, we spoke to a fellow who speaks nothing but French. And this place has been open now, so let's have a look inside. Hopefully you can see there, but it looks as though there's a little bar and a cafe in there. Maybe for visitors who turn up and want to have a look at this place. 
or for volunteers who were actually cleaning the site up and get it back to how it uh, was back in 1940s. Now, whether that's been done up originally as it was, or it's part of the cafe, uh, maybe it's not a cafe, maybe just uh, they've, they've uh, renovated up to how it was in 1940s. If you had to come here, um, I'm not sure how much it is to get in. I just turned up really early in the morning. The gate was already open. If there was a gate there at all, actually, when I think about it. We've had a walk around the site. Nobody's bothered us. Uh, some people have turned up, some uh, local lads who uh, cut the grass, which you can probably hear behind me. <coughs> Three people here now, they've never seen a dicky bird. They just nodded as they've drove past. We've walked round everywhere, had a good look at everything, as much as we can see. We've been here a couple of hours, uh, but there's obviously more to it than what we've uh, what we've seen. Um, I only can show you what I've seen myself and what the information I've got. Um, I'll put some information on, uh, on uh, this video of um, how to get in touch with these people if you want to turn up and maybe have a tour. Now, uh, I'm not sure if it's touring in English. I know it'll be French, definitely. Whether it's English or not, I don't know, but uh, no doubt you can ask the question. Just about to uh, pull off the site, and I saw um, one of the very first bunkers that uh, I tried to have a look at when I climbed up the some steps. There's a fire inside there now, they've opened it up, so the guy on the little tractor said, uh, do you want to look at it? And I went, yeah, let's have a look, so hopefully this guy's going to let me have a look. Right, this gentleman started a fire inside there, and that's where it is. It's not a ventilation system, it's actually a chimney. How cool is that? Huh? Oh, OK. OK. Uh, monsieur, can I entry? No, oh, she played, she played for me. Oh, right, okay. Oh, right, okay. Ah, oh, right, yeah. All right, just tell me if I go inside, though. Yeah. I'm going to choke, so I'm not going inside, right. I see, but that's a... So that's what it is, yeah. Very interesting. It's some kind of a giant poker. <laughs> trying to find the bottom of it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Give it a good, a good poke. It must be something sticking. Ah, we oui. stuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, we. Oui. Yeah, it's something stuck inside the chimney, and that's where he's trying to clear it out. I think it where he's smoking the inside of the bunker out. Okay. Oh, oh, it stinks. Okay. Ah, we. Oui. Ah, we, oui, yeah, we. Oui. Aha, the fire, there he is. There's the culprit. It's all blocked up, and that's where it's been blocked up in that part there. Is it hot? Ah, we. Oui. <laughs> this is a communications centre. It looks like it is anywhere. Uh, ah, we. Oui. Yeah, we. Oui. Radio, radio centre. That's um, obviously. Um, and there's the uh, there's the crew and bed. And there looks like it, the filtration system for it as well. Excellent. Wow. And that's how much noise it must have made in them days. Blimey. It's noisy. But uh, yeah, all communication here. And there's a, uh, a what do you call it, a uh, crinelle? Or a, um, uh, the, yeah. Or a, let's have a look. Okay, monsieur? Ah. Right, won't let me in before because that will fail when she's not going. <laughs> alarm, alarm! <laughs> you got to play the part. <laughs> ah. We, yeah, we. Ah, uh, yeah. It's blocked out, yeah. I was saying this, it's all blocked, that's why. It's probably blocked in that chimney there. Ah, right, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he's just, he's just telling me that, yeah, that's for the. Aha. Uh, uh -huh. 
Mm. Yeah, it's good. So there's two I'm working on it, and this guy's looking at to read the paper, just to relax it. And this is a crew quarters, so this is a, uh, I'm not sure what Regal Bow this is, but uh, I'll have a look anyway. But it's crew quarters, Regal Bow anyway, plus um, communication as well. And that's the filtration system. And then you've got a um, another um, machine gun post there, somebody just in case we try to attack it. And there's one there as well, which is obviously leading to the other part of the bunker. Brilliant. Water, wasa. A wasa, water, yeah. No, no aqua, aqua. No bottom. Oh, no, no. Ah, right, okay. Trink water, bottom. Oh, yeah. Water, water, water. Water, right, yeah, the water's for washing. Right, let's take some pictures. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you on the next video.